informed me that, in their opinion, a decision of that magnitude only needs the approval of a majority. However, Roberts' rule states that whenever you are limiting or taking away a member's rights or changing something that has already been determined, you need a two-thirds vote. But I am not going to argue whether or not you have the authority, nor do I want to inform you that as the chairman called the motion out of order as a point of procedure, according to Roberts' rules, the matter was dead. But what I do take exception to is your flagrant abuse of the open meeting law. You three clearly discussed and deliberated this amongst yourselves outside of a scheduled posted meeting. You can say that the three of you did not sit down together in Mrs. Pillsbury's office at the library, but under the open meeting law, decisions or deliberations cannot be made by a quorum of the board via email, phone, or what is called revolving door meetings. Revolving door meetings are when Mrs. Abbott and Mrs. Pillsbury discuss an action, and then Mrs. Abbott contacts Mrs. Parola to discuss it, and they come to a consensus, and then one of them relays their decisions back to Mrs. Pillsbury. Then you can try to claim that technically no more than two board members are conversing. But this multi-tiered conversation violates the open meeting law. What is also very disturbing is that our town administrator, Mr. Hartman, was aware of and involved with the decisions being made because Mrs. Pillsbury had been in contact with Mr. Hartman while he was conveniently on vacation. That was confirmed by council. It is also very disturbing that our town council was involved with this open meeting law violation by helping these three selectmen determine in private what they plan to do in public. After last Tuesday's selectmen's meeting, I was handed an email from someone who had received it. The reason they gave it to me was, in their words, quote, they went too far. This email was sent on Tuesday, March 21st at 2.10 p.m. It was sent from Selectman Parola using her private Comcast email address. It reads, subject, an unusual request. Well, there is no delicate way to put this, so here goes. Mary Jane, Renee, and I need your help this evening. Our intention, under the any other business portion of the BOS agenda, is to make a motion to remove Bruce's chair, citing the many incidents over the last months. Should he refuse to act on it, we will make a motion to be, for it to be placed on next week's agenda. It is unfortunate, and I personally apologize to each of you reading this, that it has come to this. We were wary of giving him the chance in this position and our worst nightmares have been realized. We compounded the problem by continuing forward in an effort to get the town's important work done on a weekly basis, as, as opposed to having our residents watch a repeat of the Pat McLeod, Paul Foley shouting matches of years past, where the business of the town clearly suffered. I guess we all felt that no good could come of continually engaging him in battle week after week, when not even an agree to disagree compromise could be reached. Those of you who work with Bruce can certainly understand this. It continues on to highlight the allegations that Mrs. Abbott made last week, which I won't repeat, but it closes with, I am emailing you all to ask that you please attend tonight's meeting. You don't even need to be there at 7 p.m. We have had few, if any, friends or supporters in the audience for months, as he has isolated all but the narrow-minded, angry lot that is left over from another era. I only have a couple more weeks of hell ahead of me, but Mary Jane and Renee must stand in for more abuse. Please consider attending to help them. Cindy. I have been informed that Mrs. Perola also took it upon herself to call and invite people to the meeting. Mrs. Abbott's friend George Barrett interrupted Wayham's Water District Union contract negotiations when he rushed in to tell them that he had gotten a call and for them to turn on the selectmen's meeting. This email and those phone calls, I believe, are proof that this, was a, that this was planned by the three of them. According to the district attorney's office, upon a receipt of a complaint, they will investigate. In matters of violating the open meeting law, the burden of proof is on you to prove, by a preponderance of the evidence, that you did not violate the law. One of the remedies, aside from fines being levied and you being forced to pick, make a public announcement, the court may invalidate any action taken at any meeting at which any provision of the law has been violated. It is considered the poison fruit doctrine. Essentially, if a decision comes out of an illegal meeting, then the decision is as bad as the meeting itself. So rather than forcing me to go to the district attorney and drag us through court, I respectfully request that you publicly acknowledge your error. 
Now with all this, I have to wonder, why did you elect me as chairman? Why would you want me in chair when Mrs. Parola has yet to speak to me unless the cameras are on? Why would you want me in the chair when you have offered me such little support as a fellow selectman? These are not my questions to answer, but if you ask the many, many people who have called me in the past few days, apparently your scheme is to publicly embarrass me as I sit in as chairman. The fact is, you have appointed me as chairman, but in my opinion, the decision to remove Mr. Savageo as chair is tainted, and I believe it is by right still his position. I know, however, that this was the area of contention where we ended last week's meeting. Therefore, under Selectman's Policy 88-12, Section 3, which states, the presiding officer at a meeting may call any other member to take his place in the chair, but the substitution shall not extend beyond adjournment. I am invoking my right to select Mr. Savageo to be the chair pro tem for this evening's meeting, and perhaps we can get on with the business of the town. I do not know what your plan is, but I will not be a willing party to it, nor will I be a victim of it. Thank you, uh, Brenda, for your uh, your comments, your thoughts, and uh, your integrity. I hope everybody had a nice week. Hey, that was good. <sighs> so, let me go through tonight's agenda, if I can. For those of you at home, we've had the roll call. We'll have the Wareham Community Preservation Act plan presented by Susan Pizzolato. Thereafter, we'll have citizens participation. Uh, we'll have the consent agenda. The clerk will take us through authorization to sign bills and any other documents. We'll have Mr. Hartman's administrative report, followed by um, seven licenses and permits for renewal of seasonal liquor licenses under the provisions of Chapter 138. We have two brief announcements. And then uh, under business, we will discuss closing the special town meeting with the remaining votes. We will discuss appointing town council, and then we will discuss the proposed article by the Wareham School Committee for uh, referral to the uh, planning board and uh, public hearing. We'll discuss the selectmen, any of the selectmen reports. We will adjourn Mr. Hartman. I don't believe we have an executive session. Is that correct? Okay. Uh, Susan Pizzolato, please. Wareham Community Preservation Act. Good evening. Um, I'm Susan Pizzolatto, Chairman of the Community Preservation Committee, and I'd like to introduce the other uh, members of my committee that are here with me tonight. Marjorie Teitelbaum, who represents Open Space, Sherby Worthen, who represents the Recreation Commission, Nancy Miller, who's a member at large, and Christy Gunnell is a member at large. Um, we also have representatives that um, sit in the seats for Affordable Housing and the Wareham Historical Commission and the Conservation Commission. Thank you. Um, we're here tonight to talk to you about some recent work done by the Com Community Preservation Committee. Um, the first thing I wanted to talk with you about was to present our revised plan. Um, we had a public hearing on March 9th, 2006, and as required by law, uh, we advertised it in the paper for two consecutive weeks so that we could discuss the um, plan with the community and take up public input. 
I'm happy to say that this year we did have some guests as well as members of the press.